upper airway concerns. When we speak of the upper airway, we're speaking above the lungs. So we tend to think of upper airway as the nasal section. When we speak of upper airway, it's above the lungs. And um, we're looking at the nasal passages, the mouth, the oral cavity, the nasopharynx, the velopharynx, which is hard palate to uvula. Not a lot of people use the term velopharynx. Some people do, some people don't. But they tend to use nasopharynx, oropharynx, and hypopharynx. So if someone uses the term velopharynx, at least know that that's that area, hard palate um, to the uvula area um, in the throat. So you're looking at the nasopharynx up there, the oropharynx behind the oral cavity, and the hypopharynx lower. The reason these become important is because the upper airway resistance mainly occurs in the nasopharynx and the upper oropharynx, and that's a partial blockage. You've got tonsils and adenoids there restricting the inflow of air. Then upper airway obstruction, actual blockage, usually occurs more in the oropharynx and the upper laryngopharynx. So you're dealing with resistance being a little higher. The actual blockage is the tongue um, blocks the airway and the airway collapses in a slightly lower region. So again, nasopharynx, upper oropharynx, your concern is resistance, oropharynx and upper laryngopharynx, obstructions due to the tongue collapsing and collapse of the airway. So when you talk about obstructive sleep apnea and airway concerns, what you're worried about is airway collapsibility, airway looseness, the negative inspiratory pressure of breathing in and collapsing the airway, and Bernoulli's principle. We all remember Bernoulli's principle, air moving faster tends to draw things in. Air moving over the curved surface of a wing has uh, less sideways pressure than the air under the wing that is tending to lift it up. So the more you move air rapidly through the airway, the more it will tend to suck in and collapse. Um, obstructive sleep apnea. Deeper levels of sleep, the decreased muscle tone to the airway muscles and the, and the tongue, the airway muscles become more relaxed and the airway is more collapsible when someone breathes in. Bernoulli's principle, narrow airway, air moving faster, sucks the airway closed even more. Um, and very often you'll have the airway totally collapse. Decrease in airway volume, you decrease it a little bit, increase the velocity, increase the eddy currents and the turbulence, you increase the resistance, so not only are you getting less air in, you're snoring more, and it requires more effort to breathe in to inspire. So people will wake very tired. Increased airway resistance, it's harder to breathe in, the airway collapses. In dental treatment, think airway. When the joints are seated and the muscles relax, the airway is more patent. You affect the hyoid bone position. You're giving room for the tongue. If you're decreasing the vertical dimension of a patient with ortho, if they're a, uh, a high VDO patient, and with, with ortho, crown and bridge, dentures, you're decreasing the vertical dimension, then expand the arches laterally. Give room for the tongue so it's not forced to retract into the throat. If you're retracting the anteriors, try to increase the VDO or expand laterally. So your thoughts with ortho should be to enlarge the airway, widen and expand the arch, and try to avoid bicuspid extractions. Between the number of bicuspid extraction cases we've done in the past several decades and the increased obesity, we are having a, an absolute epidemic of sleep disorders. Facial form, Obviously, a class one is gonna be normal. Class three patients really tend to have large airways, and the class twos are gonna be your problem patients. So the concern is, is there room in the mid-face, lower face, and neck for the airway size? Tongue, major culprit. The genial glossus muscle relaxes during sleep. For some people, it happens gradually. For some people, it happens suddenly and there are different levels of sleep for different individuals at, to, at which they lose tongue activity. The tongue and obesity. The tongue itself will have more, more fatty tissue in the base. They'll, it will be larger in size. The muscles will not work as well. 
The pharyngeal walls are fattier and will collapse more easily. You have more bulk in the neck trying to push in the airway walls and you overall end up with a decreased airway size. In obstructive sleep apnea patients, the, genetically, the muscles are less efficient. They, they actually have a different uh, genotype than other patients. So the tongue will, will fatigue more easily, will collapse more easily, resulting in snoring and obstructive sleep apnea. OSA is about the airway. Enlarged tongue, tonsils, uvula, pharyngeal walls, pharyngeal fat pads, possible genetics of obesity, mm -hmm. allergy, inflammation, um, battering the tissues with snoring, causing them to enlarge, and GERD, which inflames the tissues, makes them swell. So very often, your, an overall thought to your airway treatment is treat the airway, appliance or CPAP, weight loss is essential, uh, allergy meds to decrease swelling of the uh, tissues, Medrol do dose pack to decrease the swelling from allergies, battering by snoring, and, um, and GERD, which will inflame the tissues and swell them, and medications for the GERD to allow the tissues to settle. Obstructive sleep apnea, airway collapse, made worse with age and deeper levels of sleep, tongue relax relaxation, collapsing into the throat, increasing with age and deeper levels of sleep, and obesity, which decreases the effectiveness of the tongue muscles, enlarges the base of the tongue. There's a lot of fat that builds up in the base of the tongue, you'd be surprised, and building up the pharyngeal walls, all made worse by GERD. So your question is the anatomy, the container of the mandible and airway too small, or the contents, the soft tissues, too large? Avoid ortho retraction, which is gonna crowd the tongue. Something to mention to your patients, breastfeeding is one of the best prophylactic treatments for obstructive sleep apnea. So the infants that are breastfed de develop the proper tongue position and tongue use and swallowing index. They develop the proper palatal form. They develop, develop arch form more the way it should be. So your airway is developing normally and they decrease snoring and a lower incidence of obstructive sleep apnea. The baby's healthier, you're not getting as many allergens, dairy, rice, whatever, increasing congestion. So breastfeeding does a lot for the health of the child.